I'm leaving to go on a 10 day elk hunt in New Mexico. I'm gonna be around 12,000 feet um, after the after the pack in. And what's, what's special about this hunt as opposed to other hunts or other backcountry hunts that I'm going on is uh, we're just gonna kind of be chasing bugles through the day and wherever we end up at night is where we end up. And we're just gonna kind of basically, uh, you know, pitch a little spike cam there, go to bed with the elk, hopefully wake up with the elk so we're right on their tails when uh, when the sun comes up so we can try to get in on them with the bow and get them called in. So we're gonna be in pretty thick timber, basically hunting sounds rather than, you know, hunting the site uh, of what we see. So the first thing is food. I like I like food in the back country. I like food anytime, really. Um, but in the back country, I, I, I really, um, my efficiency of hunting truly goes up when I have enough food, enough calories to intake for me. And over the years, I've kind of got a system down of what does well for me. On a typical hunt, what I would do is wake up and have two little bags of oatmeal. The oats and the carbs do really well for me in the morning. Um, but with this hunt, I don't want to take the time of burning fuel in the morning, boiling water in the morning, waiting for all that. So I'm waking up to just a plain bar. So what I have here is 10 days of food and two 15 liter uh, outdoor research bags. And the reason why I have them in two is I like to stack uh, horizontally in my pack, get that weight to sit lower down on the bottom of my pack. So if I sit them like this, it's a lot better than doing it in one pack, sitting, you know, sitting tall vertically. So what I'm basically going to do is wake up to a pro bar meal. From there, I move on to a tortilla with some Justin's peanut butter. I try to make it to 12. Usually I make it till about 11, um, but that's my 11 o'clock. From there, I just kind of snack a little bit on beef jerky. Handful of Skittles, that's an everyday's pack, obviously. Um, honey's finger, clip blocks, energy blocks. A pro bar for like four or five o'clock so I can hunt those last couple hours super hard. And with that, I'll take an energy stinger. And then I obviously I have Mountain House to finish the day off. And this is the only time I'll be burning fuel and trying to boil water is um, at the end of the day so I can get some Mountain House in. One pound, uh, about, 1.53 pounds of food a day. Um, so I'm a little bit over 15 pounds for the trip. For the water side, I'm actually not going to boil water for the, for the coffees in the morning. I'm basically just gonna take them like an energy shot right when I wake up out of bed. So I'll take these two as an energy shot with water. So I'll just open the case, take the coffee grounds, um, get the caffeine in me so I can wake up a bit faster, but I don't want like I said I don't want to boil the water and take the time to do that in the morning So I'm just gonna kind of hack the, the caffeine into my body And then I also have the two Gatorade or these are crystal light packets um, electrolytes flavor It's really nice to have some some of that sweet flavor and liquid when you're back there for for ten days day one two three doesn't necessarily matter but ongoing from there it's really nice to have some flavor in your water. That's a day for me. Every day is the same as far as food goes. Just the assorted flavors will change a bit. Biscuits and gravy is my absolute favorite for Mountain House. Like, I mean, I borderline kind of just eat it in the morning when I'm at home. That's how much I like it. And uh, so out of 10 days, I have six of those. <laughs> so when it comes down to hydration and cooking, which ultimately gets me my mountain house at night, my favorite food. I have an MSR wind burner stove. And because we have a cameraman, is why I have two, is why I have two uh, fuel canisters. But for me, if it was just me, I'd go in with just one. One would absolutely last me for 10 days, especially only burning at night. And then for water treatment, I have the Aquamira Drops trail shot water filter, just in case I want to fill up. Um, my daily, which is a Nalgene, go hunt Nalgene, and then a two liter platypus. So this is what I kind of have on me, what I use this, filter the water straight into it. Um, at night, if I wanted to just not even deal with it, just fill this up, fill the two liter up as fast, you know, just get it out of the creek and put the drops in it, let it sit overnight. That's why I bring the drops. It's just nice to have that, that little fail safe for me. I like having that so I don't always have to filter. I can let it sit overnight. Um, but yeah, the wind burner, fuel cans, um, then I use the MSR folding spoon, the spork, this thing's awesome.
And then I obviously, I bring wet fire with me as well. Wet fire is awesome just in case. It's kind of a, more of an emergency thing with me, but it just sits in with my lighter and my, my fuel cans. In my mind, it just kind of makes sense to be there. So total, what's in front of me right here, um, including the two cans, aquamira drops, everything, is about, looks like uh, 6.42 pounds is what all of this equates to. But that is also taking into account my Nalgene being full and my platypus, two liter platypus being full. So that's trail weight, right? When I hit the trail head, there's a, these are obviously gonna be full. Saves me one less trip of filtering water, saves me on drops. So I'm gonna hit the trail head with both of them full. Aside from food and water, which is obviously the ultimate thing to survive back there, you know, you can curl up under a tree if you had to. But besides that, the next thing is obviously shelter for me. Like I said, we're kind of just chasing the bulls in the timber. We're gonna be chasing noises more than we're chasing our sight. Uh, and we're gonna be going to sleep with the bulls, so hopefully we can wake up with them. So with that, we're actually gonna get a bivy hunt and spike camp hunt. So basically what I have in here is my entire sleeping setup. And the reason why it's a little bit hard to get out, a little bit tight, so I actually leave it all in one. So this is the Outdoor Research Helium Bivy um, that I'm gonna be running on this hunt. And inside of it right now, I have my sleeping bag, which is the, uh, my sleeping bag is the Western Mountaineering 10 degree. So that's what I have in there for that. Then underneath it, I also have my sleeping pad. So I run the uh, NeoWare X Lite. It's a bit loud, kind of sounds like a raccoon in a potato chip bag, as Trail would say. Um, but for me, this is a pure, it's a, it's a full inflatable and it's horizontal baffles and I'm a side sleeper. So I gotta have the long in all of these. And this is definitely the lightest out of all of them for the long. It takes a bit more breath to blow up. But for me, it's two and a half inches thick and I get to sleep on my side. Those body mapping ones where they try to cut out, you know, some of the air pockets and have the baffles running against your shoulder blades on your hips and your feet, all the hot spots when you're laying down. As soon as I turn on my side, it kind of throws that off. I can do it and it's comfortable, but I would much rather prefer to sleep well. Um, just like food, a good night's sleep for me really puts me on the right track in the morning to chase the bulls down the way I'm gonna want to. Blow up pillow, gotta have a pillow when I sleep. Just one of those things for me. Gotta have my head elevated and that XL pillow gets me enough air underneath my neck that it actually does lift up my neck. The total weight is 5.08 pounds and that accounts for all this. So I'm um, basically five pounds for a pillow, the Helium Outdoor Research Bivy, the x Light from Thermarest sleeping pad, and then the Western Mountaineering 10 degree vers uh, Versatile. So pretty light actually for a uh, sleeping and shelter um, set up and I and I did have weight in mind choosing all this stuff just because I am gonna have it on my back every day And how I roll that up um, In my bag is I literally just I put it in there They're both in there right now hanging out just like that the uh, This helium bivy comes with a Face guard to lift the lift the bag up off you just a little bit um, And then I just roll that into the center of this, but it's all in one package So when I get to camp I pull it out of that Throw it down on the ground, blow up my air mattress, and crawl into bed. Um, beyond that is rain gear. Uh, now we're getting into just kind of like the nitty gritty stuff of um, kind of the needs when you're back there. That's, in my opinion, food, water, shelter, that's survival, in my opinion. Um, I definitely like to go comfortable on that side. And then from there, I wouldn't necessarily say I'm a minimalist, but everything is chosen for very specific reasons. Um, rain gear, I actually have uh, that in a dry bag, but I like dry bags for organization. So I don't use pockets in a backpack for organization, I use dry bags. And that's why it's in a dry bag. I get asked that question all the time, but um, there's my backpack rain fly, my uh, Arcturix Beta SL hoodie, Arcturix uh, hard shell jacket. This is water resistant, just in case it's a light storm. Um, I use that, and then this is the pants, the Arcturix Beta SL pants. Um, total weight of my rain gear. I like pocketed rain gear, so I like the zippers in the pockets, because standing in a rainstorm for me is always way more comfortable standing with my hands in my pocket. 
my hands in my pant pocket rather than trying to get them inside the cuffs and stand there to keep them out of the rain. So I like the zippered stuff, even though it leads to a bit more weight. Coming in at 1.64 pounds for all this, so super light. Next is my down gear, which I think is a must on, on any hunt. I am in New Mexico. Temperatures will probably be a bit warmer than uh, you know the Rockies and things like that, but down for me, I wouldn't necessarily call it a survival piece of gear, but this is pretty close to that as you can get, just because no matter what, down's always gonna be there for you, especially with you know the, uh, the quicks down and all that stuff that they're running in these jackets now that keeps them all dry no matter what. This is the Arcturix Cerium jacket, Cerium hooded jacket, is what I have here. Uh, then I also have a vest that I wear underneath it. It's also the Cerium. It's just the vest version of it. Um, they're both 850 fill. And then the only ones, the only pants, down pants that I found that have full zipper on the sides, which I don't know if they're making them anymore, but is the Kuyu uh, down pants with the full zipper side. And these are like last ditch resort. I mean, these things only come out of the bag if it is truly freezing. Something happened that day, freak storm, I got wet, you know, something weird, but those pretty much stay on the bottom of the, of the dry bag. And these come out quite a bit during the hunt. 1.49 pounds, that's for the total set of all my down, the jacket, the vest, and the pants. On day five, I have a change of clothes. So on this hunt, it's always half, halfway in. So I'll hike it in a t-shirt that I keep. It'll just be a go hunt t-shirt. That's what I hike in. Um, always nice to have, you know, pictures or whatever, just to kind of have that branding for me. Um, but beyond that, I have what I wear in, and then I have whatever the half day mark is. So on the sixth morning, I'll wake up and have a fresh change of clothes. Take that with a grain of salt. It's not like I have a full change of clothes. Um, but what I bring in, is the base layer shirt that I get to change, a pair of socks that I get to change, a pair of underwear that I get to change, and a um, outer layer long sleeve. That's it. And then I this is just a insulation layer just in case something happens to my. This is more of a backup safety piece, but it is clean. That's why it makes sense in my head to be in here. Um, but as far as the clothes that I'll change into on the half day mark. That's it. Total weight, these three items is 0.76 pounds, so it's not even a full pound. Obviously, I mean, it's all just a little tiny stuff, a pair of socks, a pair of boxers, undershirt, and an outer base layer. Um, it's warmer weather, so, I mean, this they're, they're just not thick. For me, it works. It helps keep me comfortable, and that's what's on next to my skin. So, that's my change of clothes. Um, you know, necessity for me is the personal bag in the backcountry. All of my personal stuff, um, as far as I'm concerned, what helps me, and I like to be comfortable, it helps me focus during the hunt, so I do bring a little bit of lotion. A lot of people think I'm crazy for it just because it has some weight and some size to it. I mean, it's not that big and doesn't weigh that much, but it does add up. Um, but for me, I get that dry skin on my sides, and it really helps me to have this. Neosporin, more of an emergency thing. Hardly ever use it, but if I have to, I have it in my personal bag. Um, wet wipes, they don't weigh anything. I <laughs> you can never have enough. Um, toothpaste and toothbrush, travel size, you know, backcountry style. Gold bond, for me, must have. Um, definitely keeps the below the belt region a lot more comfortable. Um, you know, don't have to worry about getting monkey butt and all that stuff. Uh, when you're sitting in the same boxers for a couple days, so that and then a little tiny thing of deodorant um, helps with this obviously like Is a is a hack that most people know about but if you don't know about it, it's really good with chafing So whether it is under your arms or between your legs or whatever it is back your heels deodorant is really good for chafing It heals it super super fast um, Toothpicks never have enough toothpicks in the backcountry my opinion, something to do during the day. Uh, keeps your teeth feeling fresh. I like that feeling. Some people think I'm crazy for that too, but I like to be comfortable in certain ways and th that's where I, you know, doesn't weigh hardly anything, but I like to get a little more comfortable with that. And then this is my medicine bag. So 
So I have Advil, Excedrin, and then Zyrtec D for allergies in case my allergies flare up really bad. You know, Band-Aids and the go-tos for that, just in case blisters, cut, anything like that. Total weight for this entire thing is 1.68 pounds. So pound and a half doesn't really equal anything, you know. It's funny, everybody has a drawer in their kitchen or laundry room, whatever, where they just put absolutely everything they have in it. Everybody's kind of got that in common. This is that for me. Um, everything that I'm grabbing for the day is going to be in here. I think this is my heaviest bag, um, but it's my, it's my day to go to. So, in this, I got a lot of stuff. I have two backup rechargeable batteries, Poseidon batteries. I mean, I don't mind bringing that extra bit because I do enjoy taking pictures, so I don't want to run out of batteries back there. Um, elk bugle, obviously, going on an elk hunt, really want an elk bugle. Um, baby wipes, just in case, because it's my quick grab bag. Um, I have a beanie, just in case it gets cold, real quick, when I'm glassing. Gloves, just in case it gets cold, real quick while I'm glassing. I have two headlamps. People think I'm crazy for that, too, until they see how useful it is to have two headlamps and then they think I'm genius. Um, life straw, emergency. This is, like I said, this bag is always on me. It's always in my backpack. So I always have an emergency filter just in case this thing weighs an ounce. I have four AAA batteries, full backup set. This is my glassing bag. So sticks of gum and like little raspberry sweets. Emergency on sleeping bag, sleeping pad, or the bivy. Um, this silicone glue, I always have this on me too, just as a straight up emergency in case um, I am in a rainstorm, something happens to any of my shelter, I can fix it real quick with some silicone glue. Uh, sunglasses, definite need in the backcountry. Then an Allen wrench set, it is a bow hunt, all bows work out, most bows work off of Allen wrench sets, mine does, everything on my bow works off an Allen, Allen wrench set, um, so it's kind of necessity, I mean obviously the weapon's what's going to kill the animal. So I got to make sure I can fix it in case something happens. Backup wind checker, in case mine falls out of my bino harness. Uh, Leatherman, Skeletal, it's their lightest one. A pair of pliers in the backcountry is an absolute must have in my opinion. Roll of electrical tape. So I do go a little bit heavy on a roll of electrical tape, but this honestly is like my MacGyver in the entire bag. I truly think electrical tape is the most versatile thing I have. I have used electrical tape to fix a tent pole, I've used, an I've used it to fix a bow sight, I've used it to fix um, a tent itself, ran it on both sides, didn't have any silicone glue on me at the time. I've used it for everything. I've used it for a knee brace three years ago when I had to get out of the back country when I had a knee injury. Within it also is my, this is the Leica plate, little strap plate for glassing. Um, this sits in that bag too, just because I run a, a pair of 12s, a pair of the Ultra 12s from Leica, and they're around my neck. So when they're around my neck, they don't necessarily need to be strapped to this all, all the time, obviously. So this stays in this bag. So when I sit down and start glass and I pull it out. And then lastly, a lens pin. Can't, I mean, can't go wrong with the lens pin. With as much optics as we use, uh, my camera setup, how much I use the camera, a lens pin is definitely a go-to keep all that stuff clean and keep it working the way I want it to. So um, that's basically my everything bag. Um, weight of this bag is four pounds, 4.2 pounds. Um, depending on how many batteries I take in, depending on, um, you know, what kind of migrates out of the bag during the hunt. But for the, as it sits right now, it's 4.2 pounds. So it'll be about 3.8, 3.9 pounds during the hunt at the trailhead. Um, next is the hope that gets put to use and that's my kill kit. Kill kit is always on me as well. Um, you know, one of, the, one of the things I do with my kill kit that I've seen other people do differently is uh, I run electrical tape all across my, my knife case. A lot of people do it on their trekking pole or their tripod or things like that, but I just like it right here close to my, to my knife. Um, but in my, in my kill kit I have the carnivore game bags, the big game bags, um, the high country game bags, and then I'm, I also have the, the, um, the poly bag, 
just so you can throw your meat on it while you're processing the animal and keep it clean from the dirt and things like that. Simple kill kit. Um, I also have my tag in there. Mexico is super interesting, their tag system. It's basically a printer paper, punch the hole when you're done. Um, but that also always goes in my kill kit too. Just like I said, that's what you're hoping to use at the end of the day. Um, and when it comes down to an animal on the ground, everything that, that equates to taking care of it is what's in this bag. Knife, game bags, poly, poly bag, keeping the meat clean and the tag, so. The total weight of the kill kit is 1.22 pounds. I don't get too crazy with the, with the kill kit. It's all really all you need. Good knife, game bags, and tag, good to go. This is a tarp. It's actually the Big Agnes Onyx UL tarp, and it weighs 10 ounces. So for me, because I'm in a bivy, um, we're gonna need the timber a lot. Uh, it's always nice just to have a tarp. I was actually on a dull sheep hunt in uh, Northwest Territories two years ago. It was two years ago, and the guy that I was hunting with always carries a tarp on him as well. When I killed my ram, a rainstorm rolled in, and it was unbelievably nice to throw up the tarp and take care of the animal right there underneath the tarp and not even worry about the rain. It's a 10 by, an eight by 10 tarp, tons of versatility on how you can set it up. And that's with the, that's with the spikes too, it's, it's 10 ounces, so. Um, yeah, I'm kind of struggling with making like a really good point of having it, but hopefully I can find one on this hunt. I just want to put it to good use, so that's in there for this hunt. And then optics for me, I run the marsupial um, rangefinder pouch and, and bino harness. Love it so far, first year using it. Um, yeah, I, I really like it. On it, I have the uh, Go Hunt Spud optic cleaner. Like I said, I have the rangefinder, I have the Lupul uh, RX1000 for the, for the rangefinder. And then the rangefinder, or the bino harness itself, um, like I said, I, I have the, the 12s, the Leica Ultravid 12s, um, and they fit in the medium, the medium vinyl harness. I have my wind checker on the side always right next to me just in case um, I need to check the wind real quick, heard a bugle or anything like that, just really quick to have it on me. That's what I run for, for a vinyl harness, range finder, and uh, range finder harness. But this is the 1204 XL, and one thing for me in the backcountry that is a must um, is a fully a, a full extension tripod, one that I can actually stand up and use. Um, I definitely go a little bit heavy on that, but it's definitely for a reason. For me, I mean, just the fact that I can stand up when I glass is enough for me to have a full, a full, uh, full size tripod. And then obviously the pictures too really helps me make that decision. But that's the uh, Surui 1204 XL tripod. This is the VA5 uh, ultralight fluid head. There's the model number on the head. Really like it. I like to film with the Times Up uh, scope cam. All that is 7.96 pounds. So not terrible when you take into account it's a full size tripod, 12s on the binos, the range finder. But it's also, the only thing that's in my pack is this. Um, but I like to count my weight, what I hit the trail weight, the trailhead at. So even my boots, the clothes I'm wearing, all of it goes into total weight for me. Um, and so I break these down into its respective categories. So the category itself is 7.98 pounds, but really the only thing that's going into my backpack is this and the tripod head. Trekking poles for me, these are the Legacy Ultralights. Uh, really, really like these, these trekking poles. I used them on my last hunt. Um, one of the reasons why I really like trekking poles too is just the versatility. Obviously, it's basically makes a human go into 4x4 mode, being able to use them. I strongly recommend them. I have an issue with my left knee. This is, you know, a huge help for that, especially in the backcountry hunts when I'm really using my legs a lot. Um, basically adds nothing, and they're never in your pack unless you're going on stock. They're only one pound. So the versatility for it, um, especially, like I said, being able to put the human body in 4x4 drive, it's a, it's a nice thing to have. They're always with me in the backcountry for sure. That's it. That's kind of my my system. Um, what I think is important, my system for what I think is going to work best on this hunt with how we're going after these elk, trying to wake up with them every day. Um, and then 
for the most part, nothing nothing changes. When I hit the trailhead, this is exactly what I what I have all in my backpack. Um, everything that I went over is included in my pack weight. My pack weight right now is 66.1 pounds, and that's with weapon. I have an eight and a half pound bow. I shoot the Matthews Hamlin X. That'll be strapped to the outside of it. Um, but with with the weapon on it, I'm 66.1 pounds. And every pound counts. You know, people think we're crazy when you talk about the backcountry cutting ounces and half ounces and things like that, but it all adds up. Going from a 74 pound pack to a 66 pound pack is a pretty big difference for me. So, thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful. If there's any specific questions, I'd be more than happy to answer them uh, when I get back and after this, after you guys see the video. But um, that's definitely my go to um, for this hunt specifically, which is New Mexico elk, 12,000 feet in the backcountry trying to stay on their tail the entire time, waking up with them, going to bed with them, super active hunt. So that's it. Um, that's what I'm going with. Hopefully it leads to success.